I got a man sitting across me right now who has paved a a lane that uh, not many people do. It's a very niche and very interesting lane. Uh, Josh Andrews, what's going on, bro? What's up, man? How are you, man? Pretty good. How you doing? Good. Thank you for coming on. No problem. This was kind of random. I was just like, I saw you maybe liked my shit on Instagram, and I was like, I got to get this guy on. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've known you f since high school, but I didn't really know you. Like, me and yeah. you didn't hang out. Just uh, mock trial. Just mock trial. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. And then we had very similar circles. Yeah. But post high school... Did you go to tech? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What did you study at Georgia Tech? Uh, I, I did IT management, so business stuff, and um, graduated in December 2013. And at what point in your career at tech did you realize, like, maybe I don't want to do – maybe I want to start a record label where well, we – yeah, that was actually – so I I graduated and, like, I started my job, and then – so I was working at AT&T, and I had just, like, quit working at AT&T. I have a new job, but – um, I was working at AT&T and there was actually some, some guys online. So just like a website I would go to was, um, like a vinyl collecting website. Yeah. And there were some guys who started up, uh, cassette labels and I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. And, um, I actually, so I found this band. It was on, um, there, I went to a website, uh, called Mew. It was a, like a board on 4chan. Okay. So it was just like a music board. And I used to go there all the time back in like college. Okay. Yeah. And give me a year. Like what year? So this would have been 2014. So like, like almost four years ago to the day. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. So I went, um, I went on there and I found this band. And so all the, these guys had been doing all this stuff with cassettes on this board I was going to. And, um, I found this band in a, um, it was a, like a, a post about the band real estate okay. and people were just talking about like real estate and, and um, bands like it. And this guy recommended a band called suburban campers okay. and they were just like this small band from California. They didn't have hardly like they, they only had like a few hundred followers on Facebook and stuff. And I was really like, I love their music. And so I reached out to him to see if they had anything physically available. Cause like, I've always been like a, record collector, um, CDs, everything, yeah. um, since like middle school. So I reached out to them and to see if they had anything. And they said they didn't have anything and like any physical merchandise. And so I had seen these guys doing the cassettes. So I just asked like, Hey, would you guys be interested in maybe doing a cassette? And, and this is you fronting it. Like you're, yeah, all by myself. It was just... And so what, what's the overhead on like, Oh, f so for the, the first, like back the, for like a very small, run um would be so we did 50 cassettes okay and you got to buy the cassette so it'd be like maybe like a buck 50 a piece and then you'd have to buy a case for like 30 cents and then you'd have to print up the artwork and so it'd be about like two bucks a cassette okay um, but i mean i had no nobody on earth like like I just had to start up. Like I didn't know who was gonna buy it. Right. I was like i'm gonna do people it people are like we have fucking iphones so dude. i brought <laughs> This you could check out. This okay. is like the when we st originally started. This is what the cassettes are like. Oh my. Okay. And and as you're passing this to me, let me set this because we didn't even say what this is. So, uh, Josh started a record label. Is yeah. that fair? A record yeah. label called Human Sound Records that distributes solely on vinyl and cassette. No vinyl yet. Okay. CDs right now. Vinyl hopefully soon. Okay. So so just cassettes. Yeah. So Human Sound Records is a record and, label. Yeah. CDs too. And that distributes. Cassettes and CDs. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So all I, online and everywhere. So, right. so we started out. It was um, it was just folded like photo paper. Whoa! Holy just would shit! Just cut it and and fold it up, and then there's the cassette. So would would record them by hand, each individually, and then print it out and write. The and number you can on there. see. Yeah, it's completely homemade. What the? So that's starting out. 2004 or 2014 okay so yeah. so for those listening i'm pointing at the camera right now this cassette it is a green cassette um i mean like how the fuck did you know that like you could even buy bulk cassettes like how did it's, you even it's seriously all because those guys on that uh on that website no well it was actually a it was a website called vinyl collective okay but i so i found the bands and then that's how i started out like because I did Suburban Campers, and I thought it was just going to be like a one-off thing. Right. Um, but then I just started finding some other bands online, and I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, these guys don't have anything. Maybe I'll reach out to them. And so you get these 50 cassettes made. Yeah. And do they sell? Yeah. So the, the first run the, for the Suburban Campers sold out in a month. 
What the and f- yeah, so I was like posting online on, on Mew. Uh, I made a Facebook page, Instagram, all that stuff. And I just started like, you know, posting and people bought it. And were you pleasantly surprised yeah, that I, people had fucking cassette well, players? So I, I had been, the re- whole reason like behind like even doing cassettes was I, I had like a 96 Camry. Mm-hmm. And the CD player was broken, so all I had was a cassette player. Right, where you got to plug the aux into. Yeah, your... yeah. So I was, I would listen to my like old iPhone on my uh, cassette player. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like I, I went to a few concerts for some artists, and they had started selling cassettes, so I bought that. So I'd listen to those in my car. So like I already had like a small cassette collection going, but I just was like, I don't know how many people are out there, do uh, like also buying it, but went ahead, sold it, and. They sold out like really in a quick. month. In a month, yeah. And so after they sold out, did you have this moment of like maybe I got something here? Yeah, yeah, that's what it was because like I guess there's people who are interested in it, and there wasn't many people doing it back then, especially cassette like centric. There was like like I was saying, some of the bigger labels were starting to do cassettes, but there wasn't that many just straight up cassette labels. And do you also like? Do they also distribute digitally as well? Yeah, so we have a Bandcamp page, and we would um, lo- upload everything on Bandcamp. So they would buy it, they would uh, download, they'd get the download, and it's got like a little collection. It's kind of like a little streaming service. Mm-hmm. You can download it, and then, um, yeah, so they can listen to it that way. And some people like might not even have the means to do it. They just want to support the artist because like, it gets back to the like all that so well let's be honest dude in 2018 majority of people who have record players it's for aesthetic it's yeah. not because they're listening to records um but it's crazy i mean dude you know if 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 i would have bet on this in 2014 and you would have and i'd have heard about this and you'd have been like bro i'm gonna have this record label that distributes cassettes and cds yeah. i'm gonna be like you're fucking crazy dude. but it worked <laughs> yeah and it was so, crazy I, I didn't expect it to be much more than just like a one-off thing and so how many artists have you oh distributed now total more than you can count well i've worked with a lot of artists especially when i was first starting out i was i worked with a lot of people i found on online and a lot of smaller um bands but then um so actually in um i guess 2015 i met this uh, guy through actually through this guy modern nomad who i just found online he introduced me to this um artist called travis bretzer and um he uh, he had just released an album on a, a bigger indie label called Mexican Summer. Okay. And I really like uh, enjoyed his music. So I, uh, I found out some of his older music and um, there was there wasn't any like release for it uh, still available. He released it in like 2010. Okay. And this is 2015. Right. So I just reached out to him and like, hey man, are you interested in maybe reissuing that album? And then he's like, yeah, like I, let's do it. And so from that because it was a little more like an established artist and right. this is i was still like starting out. i i mean i didn't i kind of just like did everything like so you put up the money it. you put up oh the- yeah yeah for all of it but um I, until up until this day you put up the money. yeah yeah I, every well it's itself it like sustains itself now like all of it's just from everything like dang yeah it's so- it's grown to the point where you, it doesn't even have to take anything outside it just each of the releases kind of funds the next one so you so are you breaking even every time or do you profit? It's, yeah, it's profiting. Wow. Yeah, and and that's what we use to like expand to more um, like cassette or CDs and vinyl hopefully soon. Because I'm guessing that vinyl is extremely expensive. Vinyl is to... a lot more expensive. Yeah, it's more so because um, it's for like a run of uh, cassettes. It would be like for a hundred, it would be about two hundred bucks. Okay. Um, for like to get them professionally made um for vinyl for you usually have to do it in larger runs and about 500 it's about like 2500 to 3000 dollars. Okay. but the biggest thing is like distributing it getting it out there shipping it because it takes a lot longer to ship a record you got to fold up a mailer You're right and um and here's a qu- i mean it's probably a dumb question but like they go in the studio they record their album yeah um do you send the people who make the cassettes a digital copy like is it a- yeah yeah so it's a digital so crazy. yeah i just uh so they'll send me the album we'll put it all into for cassettes it'll be all into one track for each side yeah and then um send it out did you go did you run into any problems in the beginning days of like having a mix and master on an album that you think would sound good digitally but then it sounds bad on cassette and you have to 
it's all the same. Never really had to worry for a cassette. It's it's a lot like vinyl. That's something you have to worry about. You have to get stuff mastered specifically for vinyl. But cassette, I mean, it's it's not the the most like sonically like good sounding right. format. So it doesn't right. really matter. So never really had to worry about that. But yeah, so with that that guy, I actually um we we decided to to do it like um, instead of just homemade and handmade all this we got it professionally um recorded at like a by a plant who yeah. does that got it um started getting it printed instead of having the photo paper and, and i brought you a couple oh man. for you and so Ooh. this is this is what they look like now once what and you can o- go ahead and open them up and i'm say, like afraid to open them because yeah. it's, it's like opening a. Uh, oh my god this is sick okay so for those listening um, he just handed me a cassette uh, by the group Bane's World. Yeah. Uh, or, yeah, Bane's, Bane's World. World. Um, it's a pink cassette. Um, all right, let me open this. So, you, so this, uh, hold on. This podcast has turned into an ASM. What is it, ASMR? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that shit's annoying. I feel like I'm going to shut this shit up. All right, all right, all right. So, and just from the first one you handed me, like, just even the, it just feels like, even though I haven't gotten all the way into it yet, I can tell. Okay, here we go. All right. Dude, this is nuts. Okay, so the first cassette that Josh handed me was, it had a sticker on it, and this is printed professionally. I mean, this is a pink cassette, ladies and gentlemen. Human Sounds Record. This is amazing. And so how many how many songs does each side hold? Oh, you can hold as much time as you want, really. You could get up to 90 minutes, so 45 minutes on each side. Okay. So, um... That one's about thirty minutes long. And how much? And how much would it cost me to get a cassette player? A cassette? You could just go to Goodwill and get one for like five bucks. That's where I got mine. The one that I recorded everything just at a thrift shop. So, so. you so like now that you've been doing this for a minute, like you don't have like a a two hundred dollar cassette. No, it's just a cassette player. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so then we, the other one that we have is I've heard of them. We vacations, yeah. Yeah, we've I've heard of them. I've heard of vacations. Who does the graphic stuff? Does, uh, it, so I. For a lot of these, I um, did I the, the layout. Yeah, they're yours. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, so you did them. I did the layout. I didn't do the actual art. Um, I just like kind of like put it on the cassette, um, do the layout. But um, but yeah, the bands usually provide all the art stuff. Okay, because when you're working with these bands, are they typically signed? You want to see this? Yeah. Are they typically signed to a to a label like to an indie label? Or are you finding so this that is are... like yeah these are like unsigned guys like these are people who are, we're like working together for it. So and so I'm sure that you know when you're when you're talking to these guys they're probably so excited to to do something yeah, like this. Yeah, well especially like when we we're starting out because it's a lot of um, just people who really didn't have any exposure and now it's it's grown quite a bit so. There's a lot of people like reaching out just all the time, you know, sending demos and stuff. And so what's so. your criteria to like picking an artist? So it's pretty much just stuff I like personally. If I like the music and uh, I'll, I'll put it out now, it's it's a little harder because um, it's just a lot more. A lot more people are seeing it. A lot more people are getting stuff. So I got to slow down because it's doing a lot bigger runs of stuff. Because um, like, yeah, when I was starting out, it was like the first couple of cassettes, were, like 25 cassettes each. And now it's like. 100 minimum so what's the most cassettes you've sold in a is a run run yeah well so that that bane's world has sold over 500 and then vacations has sold uh, maybe and that's just from me um from from on my side the bands have sold more um that one sold probably 300 on Bandcamp. yeah and for how much what's the ticket on what how much does it cost seven bucks seven seven yeah Okay, um, dude, this is so sick. Um, seven dollars a cassette. Um, and have you gotten a response from people that like, yeah, man, I don't have a cassette player, but I really love yeah, what you're doing. Some people just buy it without even having a cassette, and some people buy it because they like the artist, you know, and they want to support and own it, have it in their collection, and then they'll just go out and buy cassettes. Um, now one thing that players. I now one thing that I do know about you, and, and I knew this in high school. I, what's crazy is. And this is something that I, I should have told you too. What's crazy is you unknowingly put me onto Kanye West. <laughs> like, Seriously? Oh yeah. I mean, well, and so you didn't even tell me about Kanye yeah. West, but in high school you were the biggest Kanye West. Oh fan. yeah, I, I still love Kanye. Which let's dive into it. What do you what do you think about him right now? What do you uh, think about what he's doing? I don't even know. It's it's a really it's it's pretty interesting to see um, because if you told 
told me like a few years ago what Kanye would be doing these days, I would have said you're crazy. Um, it's really I don't I don't even know how to stand f like on his like I don't know if it's just you know putting on for attention. I don't know if it's because some of the things he says he because he he backpedals on stuff so quickly. Right. But he'll say these really inflammatory things and then he's like oh it's actually this and like he's like oh it's just about a discussion so I don't know you don't you so you so as I mean truly man you are yeah. potentially the biggest Kanye fan that I know. <laughs> um, you you don't have a gut feeling that it's like you don't have a gut feeling that it's like you know him just doing media stuff because Yandi See, I, didn't drop. I, I like, thought I thought that's what it was going to be at first. I but now it's like I don't even know because he's he's gotten so serious and he always just goes on these rants. So. Yeah. But I mean, he's still he's still putting out the music. So do you think that it's a mental health issue or do you think he's putting on? Uh, because I, he blames it on. He yeah. says. Yeah, I I don't know. I. I I tell you, Kanye is one person that, like, I feel like if I actually met him in person, it would make me just stop liking him. <laughs> I mean, he's a he's a crazy guy, but like, crazy people make great music. And so. so, what what's your favorite project from him? My favorite's definitely Jesus. Really? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so okay, so then just from that, was it was Dark Twisted Fantasy your favorite before that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, um, it makes sense. Yeah, it was definitely that. And um, like 808s. So you weren't like college dropout late I like, registration. Well, so I started out when I started out listening to him. I really loved college dropout late registration. Um, I, I loved all of it, and I still I don't listen to it as much. I listen to late registration more than um, college dropout. But I I used to my favorite probably in high school was graduation but i that's definitely my least favorite now um okay but but yeah it's definitely definitely yeezus and what about yeezus is your favorite oh uh, it's it's just uh really out there i think and um it's it's stopped focusing on trying to because i was never really into it as much for like just the rapping aspect and um because i i didn't listen to it. i listened to it more for the the whole um the production mm -hmm. and all of that and i think yeezus the production is is so um like really pushing next boundaries. level yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it it's, it's so different um than anything else especially like kanye um kind of like getting away from the samples yeah going a lot more electronic and i'm not even like a big electronic music fan but just kind of how he does it it was very the the whole project was like cinematic yeah and i i tell you when before Jesus came out before anything had like any of the singles i was worried that I wasn't going to like Jesus because that's when he started all the Kim Kardashian stuff. Mm. And I was like, Kanye's turning into just like a social media. Right. Trying to get the, the fame. Clout. Trying to get all that. Yeah. Like started dating like one of the most popular person like online to Ever. just like get. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then I was like, ah, oh, I'm, I don't have high hopes. And then it dropped. And I was like, wow, this a is a tear drop. Yeah. You were like, Oh, thank you. God. Yeah. That's amazing, dude. Um, and then what'd you think of... So what was... Was Life of Pablo next? Yeah, so then Life of Pablo. I really like Life of Pablo. Um, I do too. It's bloated, but... My my podcast is named after... Ultralight Beam? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I love Life of Pablo. I think Ultralight Beam, Father Stretch My Hands, um, those are some of the best Kanye songs. Yeah. And it's not and it's not the lyrics, obviously, for Kanye. It's the production. It's the and music. Him man. just bringing together. And I think that's the biggest thing about him. He's... He's not trying to be like a rapper or anything. He's trying to be just bring all these different people together, bring out the best in everybody, and just put it on an album. Because, you know, one of the biggest conversations about Kanye in the original days was this, like, producer-turned-rapper. Yeah. Thing. And I think that he opened a door for musicians to yeah. to really do whatever they want. Yeah, and, and to bring bring a lot of collaborators in because I feel like, I feel like rap music in general is so um, focused – these days on oh you got to be pure and you got to be this like like especially like drake people getting on drake for having like ghost, people, riders. ghost riders and stuff but i think I, I it's funny how kanye kind of like gets away from that even though he doesn't really write much of what he says anymore but that's the least important part exactly of and and i think and that's one of the things though i'm i'm really like outside of like kanye i kanye is definitely one of my favorite artists like modern kanye and frank ocean yeah i was gonna ask you easily frank. And then my from the olden days, like, because I like grew up on like classic rock and stuff. But I really, really love the Beach Boys. Mm. And Brian Wilson um, is very like similar to Kanye in that he is like 
just brings together all these different people. And Pet Sounds is actually the the Beach Boys album is what Human Sounds is named after. Oh, that's so you get cool. Pet Sounds and then Human Sounds. But um, so for Pet Sounds that album, um, he he didn't write. He he brought somebody else to write all the lyrics for the band. Um, he just wrote the music, but then he got all these um, session musicians from around LA to come and play everything, and then he just brought the Beach Boys in to sing, and that's and it, it made something like that, and that's kind of what Kanye does. It's so he brings sp- all these people together and then puts out something that's like really special. And and in music, you know, I think the ego is something that is usually the fall of a good artist yeah. and the fall of a good production team. And what you're talking about takes the ego side out of it. It says. You focus on your voice. You yep. focus on, and dude, let's get really, all these different people together and see what we can do. And that's amazing. I mean, I I think that that's something that music needs so much, man. And and I think that if people could, you know, see that that's what Kanye brought to the table, not this controversial crazy man. Like, yeah. Then then his legacy won't die. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is I think you know separating, especially for Kanye. Like he's always going to be this. I mean. You've got starting out. You got the Taylor Swift. You've got the George Bush doesn't care about black, black people. people. Right. You've got all this stuff early on in his career, and it was just oh, that's just crazy Kanye. And then now it's like he's still being crazy, just in a different fashion. But people are like, it's starting to wear on people because it's a different era well, too. Well, and because it's the least relatable crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 way different than what his listeners. <laughs> yeah, feel, so. man, a hundred percent. Because but it's it's just like the natural evolution of Kanye. Like, how could he get more? <laughs> Well, I think that the greatest example of what Kanye is on right now is when, I don't remember if it was SNL, but when he wore the Kaepernick sweatshirt in the Make America Great Again. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's doing. He's trying to show the con- the paradox of yeah. this all or whatever. And like, I get it, bro, but yeah, relax. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's gonna, uh, it's, it might like tarnish his legacy because like right now and like people are quick to be like, okay, we're done. Yeah. We're done with you. And like Kanye is like, but let's nobody be honest. has that influence. But let's be honest though. People are so quick to be done, and then Yandi drops, and, and then people they'll listen like, to it. Dude, number three, so hard. So is that gonna drop? Do you think he was trolling us? I think it's coming. Okay. I, yeah, it's it's really interesting that he said the whole comment about oh, um, I don't care if it's number two under mm. Carter five, but then it just doesn't drop. So, I mean, I think he wants to keep that streak up and match Eminem. A hundred percent. Which he's not gonna do with Yandi. Yeah, it'll there's be. N- there's no. Way. I think he. I, well, it's according. If he releases it this week, I don't know if there's any big projects coming out. And people are just like, are waiting. there any big projects coming out this week, Nigel? Uh, is the is your mic on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this week? No, I don't even know. You don't know? Okay, yeah. I know that. Um, no. It was Wayne and Logic and Logic Both. and Kodak's dropping in a project. Um. But yeah, I don't but, know. Yeah, I I mean I I'm excited for it because that little snippet he posted sounds crazy, really, really nice. Fire, crazy. It's fire. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you grew up really listening to classic rock yeah. and da 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 da. Um, I mean, would there ever come a time where you did a, a hip hop cassette? Yeah, I think that'd be something I'd be interested in. It'd have to it be would the right just artist. it'd have to be the right artist. Um, I've definitely. Uh, very much gotten into a lane with the the cassettes and and that is like kind of the um the market for cassettes just in general like now nowadays like all these artists are putting out cassettes like they'll do their record but everybody's got a cassette for most labels now so like in the bigger the bigger ones so and it it came who's the most mainstream artist to recently put out a cassette oh i mean Everyone. Every like well not everyone but um I mean Kanye released re released Jesus on cassette um there was a Justin Bieber album on cassette and so do you think that you just, just like caught a lane before it became yeah a I, no that's I mean completely what happened was I got I started doing cassettes and then Guardians of the Galaxy came out and they released their their uh, soundtrack on cassette and it sold like like sixty thousand cassettes and then now everybody's like oh. And especially a lot of younger people like really got into cassettes from that and then now urban outfitters stocks cassettes so and so are you just... in any brick and mortar stores oh yeah so i'm in um i have cassettes in all the atlanta stores okay um and um i've got some in seattle um california kind of scattered all over um the u.s but uh actually quite a lot in Japan because J- Japan loves cassettes and I there's actually a cassette store 
in Japan called Waltz, uh, and they they buy tons of cassettes from me. Like, I've probably shipped a couple hundred of them. And and are you a one man team? Yeah, yeah. And so, how are you getting these contacts? Oh, just online, finding, reaching out to some people. Sometimes they reach out to me. I actually just um, today got it just arrived to him but uh, it's a cassette store in japan that's also uh, it's a barbershop that's crazy. so yeah he's he's got my stuff and um i actually just we just started uh distributing cds to japan and we have uh the le- the first cd we put out we sent um uh, about 250 over there and they put them in like the big shops tower so records it- which is like the big chain in japan they had like a, a like big virgin display. records in new york yeah yeah and there was um, a huge display for this like CD. And so, is it fair to say that cassettes are selling better than CDs? I would say cassettes are definitely se- for. F- um, I mean, it, in the mainstream, probably not. But maybe in like the the smaller like indie rock world, because I I have started doing CDs and they haven't been as popular. But some people like CDs because all cars have CD players now, right? So they can listen to it for sure. Um, but um, the CDs de- or the, the cassettes are definitely more popular than the cassettes for me. Or the cassettes are more popular than the CDs for me. And yeah, I got you a CD as well. Oh, dude, I feel like you're Nardwar, dude. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I, well, this is what's funny, man. As this podcast grows, um, I want to start doing this. I want to start gifting people. Dude, this is awesome. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the latest CD. Uh, okay. And that's a Atlanta, and I've heard of Lunar Vacation. Lunar Vacation, yeah, they're Atlanta-based. Okay. So that's actually the first Atlanta artist I worked with. Okay, and if I open, like... Let's see. I want, I'm gonna open it, um, but I want to put it back in this sleeve. Yeah, yeah. So that's a little like resealable sleeve that you can okay keep. Um, on. and where do you are? Is the people who print your stuff local or? Oh no. So um, my cassettes are done by a um, a company out in um, in Ohio, uh-huh. in Cleveland, and then the CDs um, are by a place out in Oregon. Okay. So. Um, and again, I mean, for people listening to this, because. One thing that, like, just even from the last two podcasts that have come out, I've gotten a lot of stuff of, like, well, how do they do it? Like, is it just from literally being online and, like, reaching out to people and yeah, it, it's, getting a hundred no's and a couple of yeses? Like, yeah, so it just, just doing all that and then got really lucky on the big place that kind of, I think, broke the record label and made it bigger. I mean, it, it was starting to get bigger when, um, with Travis, like I was saying, he was, like, a more popular artist. Okay. Um, and then it was right after him um, for Bane's World and Vacations. Those came out at the beginning of 2016. I, yeah, or either 20... I think it actually... Never mind. It was 2017. Okay. January 2017. We um, got those albums. And um, I started... I, I decided... I had made like... When I made all of my different social media channels and everything, I made a YouTube channel. Okay. And then I just decided, oh, maybe we should start uploading stuff onto YouTube. Um, yeah. Just to... Because I, I never really used YouTube to listen to music, but Mm-mm. I was like, oh, I guess a lot of people do. So started uploading. That Vacations album got uh, like over a million views just like out of nowhere. On your and, channel? Yeah, on the channel. And it just it just somehow went like viral. It got on a suggested video. Now it's at like 1.7 million, but it just blew up. And then so started getting tons of subscribers, almost at 20,000 now. What? But then, so then all these people started coming to the um, the uh, band camp, learning about all the different music, started getting tapes, and then it just started growing from there. So you, you're so you're putting this stuff on YouTube now, and do you have this thought of like, I am in so many different outlets, like scale back, or are you like, no, no, it's time think, to scale back? I think that's just um, for like YouTube and things. I I think it's a very uh, important place to be because uh, it's funny you're at 20,000 followers on uh, YouTube yeah and you're at like 5,500 on Instagram yeah um, which is something I wanted to talk to you about too yeah. because there's some tricks and stuff that I'm only at a thousand but I've heard like algorithm software yeah I, I don't even know I, like how to do those things we can I, talk after the podcast yeah yeah um, but I mean yeah dude it's I just got lucky and, and a lot of it is you can see the you know the analytics on YouTube, which is really nice, and it's a lot of countries like, especially like Central to South America, who don't really ha- a lot of those countries don't have Spotify or they don't use Spotify, and they like YouTube is the place they go to listen to music. Yeah. So they'll find it there, and then, like, that's how they find the music. And have they you love seen it. that new thing on YouTube where you can look at your audience retention? 
Yeah, yeah. So I see that that stuff too. So it's it's really cool to see all these different metrics, and you know, you see the the male to female ratios and the the age range of everybody. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's I mean, like every day, like five thousand views. On That's YouTube. crazy. I wanna uh, I wanna go through. These aren't all of my records at all. Yeah. Um, I have a, a couple more at my house. I wonder if I brought the um. You know what, dude? I want to give you this one. Oh. Do you have that? No, I don't. All right. Well, it's yours now. Um, one of the so I one, the one I wanted to show you that is uh, very one of my favorite. I have an original Michael uh, Jackson bat. Oh, nice. Yeah, original. And so I like. I'm trying to figure out how much it's worth because like it sounds like from what you're saying like this is coming back. There's a oh, resurgence. Vinyl, vinyl of, is like it's back in like. Like, is really that one of those kind of records I should hold on to? Well, so that one, it's, what's the condition of it? Really Mint. good condition? Yeah, yeah. It was my, yeah. So my it was my dad's. Yeah. He said that he never, like, it's in its sleeve. Like, oh. it's still in the sleeve. Oh, unopened? It's open. It's open. Yeah. Um, so those are, I mean, it might have, it, it'd probably be like around like 60 bucks, something oh, like that. No, not selling that. Yeah. I thought I like five hundred dollars oh yeah for because those they sold so many mm. so like thriller like like everybody's like oh thriller. oh yeah but I there's like 50 million copies out there i guess it's like buying a justin bieber album and then yeah to sell in 30 years yeah it's so for those things but some records like some very like niche records are they're pretty did expensive. you ever listen to minor threat i did not okay all right bro since 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 we're gifting things, <laughs> since we're gifting things, I'm gonna gift you this one as well. Okay. So this is so minor threat. Um, you ever heard of backtrack? Nah. All right, I'm gonna just let you listen to minor threat. So minor okay. threat is uh like OG punk. Okay. Yeah. So I don't. Are you a punk fan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I like all different genres. So OG punk. Okay. Um, you remember like the straight edge days? Yeah. Those are like the guys yeah. of straight edge. Okay. Yeah, man, crazy. I went to a minor threat show at uh the drunken unicorn one time oh and to see these people in there who were like talking shit about drinking beers and yeah. then they're beating the shit out of each other dude <laughs> one of my favorite That's things crazy. dude are you a mosher like did you mosh no, ever no I, I never I, i'm too tall to get in those things too because <laughs> like that's what i hate when people start going crazy because and then when people start um like crowd surfing they, they always hit my head yeah, right, right. Yeah, i, I kind of stay in the back if if it's a show like that someone stage dives and kicks you in the mouth yeah it's it's too rough have you had an experience like that i've had people like kind of the start um you know crowd surfing and then come right at me and like kind of hit me and i'm kind of like uh that's like six wanna... seven yeah right in that area okay okay yeah I, I one of the worst was um the tyler the creator concert in like 2011 it was right when they they were starting to get big and um, right after goblin dropped and um i really didn't know what to expect and I didn't know what it was going to be like. like I didn't realize it was just going to be people like Mosh. What was the and show? It was at um, Center Stage. Oh, yeah. So this was 2011. So yeah. People were just getting crazy. It was crazy, yeah. It was just a bunch of like skater kids and right. just going wild. Yeah, with like the green ski masks yeah. and stuff. Like That was a weird time of life. Man. Yeah. 2011 was a weird time. <laughs> yeah. And like what's what, – so I was just about to graduate high school. And you were at Georgia Tech. Yeah. And was that... I've always heard that Georgia Tech is like the Skull and Crossbones College of Atlanta. Like, it's, you know, the most prestigious, whatever, like, engineering school, da-da-da. But that place is wild, isn't it? Uh, or no? There's there's some, like, wild aspects, I guess. Like, some people, like, they get really, uh, like, stressed out and stuff. And some people... but. I wouldn't say it's like as crazy as some of the other places, like okay. like, like how UGA would be. Because someone told but, me, Chase Chase Lawrence told yeah. me that he knew a guy who was like making research chemicals. Oh yeah, I mean people, there's like, I mean there there's some crazy people up there. So. Can you give me like one of your best crazy story, crazy college story experiences? Uh, I guess just one of the the one of the craziest things was when I um, so I would I would go to a lot of shows. Okay. Out there, and um, there's this. Uh, so, do, do you know Sanfa? Uh, yeah, that it sounds familiar. He's like he's like featured on um, on the what's the last song on Life of Pablo? It was like Saint Pablo. Great Saint, song. He's the yeah Love he's the song. feature on that. But so before he started doing all this solo stuff, 
it was uh, he was on um, this he was in this group called Subtract. Okay. And they're he's like it's a producer and then then Sampha. Okay, so it's like um, Alchemist and Prodigy. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's kind of like electronic and drums and but it's like your it's like um, UK. Stuff. Okay, gotcha. So I I guess it, I was a freshman and I was supposed to go to this concert with uh, with one of my friends and he was supposed to drive down but he couldn't do it and then so it was during um, it was during winter break I think okay. so there was nobody at school at Georgia Tech okay and I was like well I want to come down here I didn't have my I, I didn't have my car at the time I didn't have like a car at Tech because like the the parking pass was super expensive okay and I was a freshman so I was like well I'm stuck here and I this guy was supposed to come yeah so and this is 2000 like early 2011 so like. Atlanta had not like started having like all these big developments build up. Right. So I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? I'll just walk to the masquerade <laughs> from Georgia Tech. Dun dun dun. Yeah. So I walk over there. It's nothing okay. going over there. But yeah. then uh, you get there, the show's all fine. Then it's like I got to get home, and I didn't have any cash. And there's no Uber. There's, there's no, no Uber. Lift. Yeah. There's nothing like that at this time, and I didn't have any cash. Like I didn't have a job. I was just a college kid. Right. I have to walk home. In Atlanta, at like one in the morning, from masquerade, from the masquerade. to like Hemp Hill, <laughs> yes, all okay. that distance down North Avenue. That's not a short walk. It's over a mile. It's <laughs> well over a mile. It was that was the most horrifying experience. Like, because now it's like, oh yeah, why not just? Did anything happen? There were like people that came up to me, like a lot of like like people in the streets, junkies and shit. Yeah, but yeah, n- like it was just really really scary and like <laughs> after that i was like i am not gonna do stuff like that because like atlanta's a there back then more so i wouldn't i mean i still wouldn't do that i would right. not like recommend it but like back then it was like a different place like you, pont city market was not even a thought you could have disappeared nah. oh yeah yeah, yeah. you could have just gotten yeah yeah gone. not a safe walk not a safe not walk a safe, at all. <laughs> not a safe walk yeah. at all um, and you know, George, I, I've heard multiple stories of people being robbed on campus. At oh yeah. That, that type of stuff would happen all the time. Like you just get reports. Did you, just... did you know anybody? No, I never, I never knew of any of that happening. Cause I, I lived like kind of in the center of campus always. Which, I know the, so which, which building? So I, well, I lived at Glen. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that was, so it was, it was a lot safer. Um, but a lot of the people who would live off campus would would run into some stuff sometimes. I didn't really know of anybody. Did you stay on you, campus you all get, four years? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, 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 I did. Um, and that is Glenn right there by the the football the stadium. rec center. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, man, Georgia Tech is a crazy place, dude. Yeah, yeah, For it's sure. Just in the middle of the city. And so and so, you go from Georgia Tech, and then you move to Lindbergh. I moved to Buckhead first. Where in Buckhead? Uh, I was off of. Um, Far Road, um, dude. I live where? Okay, I'm sorry. Where? Yeah, it was it was a place called Allure. Dude, I literally live across the street from Allure. Oh, you know seriously? Sobu Flats? Yeah, yeah. I live in well, Sobu so Flats. So I I was there before that all that stuff built up. Okay. And yeah, it was uh, it was it was too loud over there. Dude, that gas station is yeah. mecca. That um the one right across from yeah me. yeah yeah with a little uh, restaurant attached to yeah, it yeah well now I don't know what it used to be but um, it used to be like a little pizza place dude I've seen we saw young bands there the other day <laughs> I, I see young Dolph there we've seen everybody Man. there crazy yeah that, and it's like so, so loud, many people dude. yeah it's it's twenty four seven right there yep I was on we were on my roof uh the other day and people were just racing motorcycles oh just zzzr, like did you hear that when you were over there well, yeah because. Like when when we got the place, we didn't really know much about the area. We were just trying to find like a place that fit our uh, budget and everything. And we got we we moved into this apartment, and then um, we didn't realize all the bars were just right there. Mm. So people would just come home every night and just pull the fire alarm <laughs> every night. It and, was insane. And here's the problem with that, you know, the first time it's whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah, because like that happens. Like, but then that, you get to the sixth time and you're like, like, I'm not fucking getting out. Well, of my do head. I know if this is a fire? That's what I'm saying. Or if is this just some drunk person just pulling the alarm? And and you get so annoyed with it. Yeah. I'm gonna just die in the fire. You yeah. know what? <laughs> yeah. Was, I mean, it was unbelievable. And then we got out of there and then moved to the Lindbergh area. Okay. But um, yeah, it just this was uh, for I guess a year in Buckhead. But and so is a goal of yours to make human sound records your uh like only source of income is that the goal with it um i don't think that would be i mean that it would be cool if it could get to that point um i 
I kind of just want to see where it goes, and um, so you're just enjoying it. Yeah, it's it's not like a it's it's more like a a hobby, um, because it's it's a ton of work, just constantly always having to um, do all the shipping, mm. all the like promotion, just like posting everywhere, trying to get it to see if there's any sites that might want to um, put like do an article on it, um, all that. And so it gets, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's a lot of uh, fun for me and trying to find stores, you know, to get into. And then uh, like, what do you, professionally, uh, so, so that's, that's a passion. So human yeah. subject record is a passion for you and you've done very well with your passion. Um, but professionally, like, are you doing what you want to do? Well, I, I guess, um, I, I don't enjoy it as much, I would say as the, the human sounds, but it, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Because, um, you to, because you went to college for IT. Yeah. And so that's what you're doing now. Yeah, yeah, like IT business stuff. So it's it, it's a it's a good job. It's stable. What's and, like the top of the IT world? Like, what is like every um, IT uh, major's well, dream? I guess uh, just like in general, like like a, a high ranking place in in a company, like a VP over the IT. Okay. Or something like that. It's it's because uh, it's more so than um, I'm. I wasn't doing like coding or anything, like developing software. It was more so like um, the business side of things and and how people are um, like managing people and and what's the stuff's bus- running. Oh, that's interesting. So you're not really doing. You're I doing- don't. Yeah, I, I like when I see what people are um, are delivering and what they're making. Like because there are people like coding and developing the software. Right. Um, and I, I make sure they're getting it on time. Make sure they're like doing on budget and um, kind of reporting that up to the people who are who are needing it in the company. And I just figured out. I just learned that we work for the same company. Yeah. Um, did you hear that we got bought out? Oh, so I think yeah, Cox Media did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so y'all are fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think they just sold. Dude, we're shitting bricks over there right now, bro. We're, we're afraid that um, you might not know who this is, but we're afraid that Sinclair's gonna come in. Uh huh. You know who that is? Oh, the, the they're like kind of like clear channel kind of exactly yeah. they're, the, they're the people who are always trending on facebook because literally their script across every station is oh, the same like yeah 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 dude we are nervous i mean the, so ideally what would happen to us is abc would come in and buy us yeah um which would be unbelievable but like you gotta think dude yeah. like 2018 the news is going bye-bye yeah and you would never have thought that cassettes and <laughs> cds were coming back <laughs> but seriously i mean it's it's nuts, man. Like, do you ever tune into the news? Like, are you are you following uh-huh. this Brett Kavanaugh stuff? I mean, not on like the news. I, I'll see it on like Twitter. Online, yeah. What do you think? Different websites. What do you think about that oh, stuff? That stuff's crazy. Like, it's it's insane that that not more like that people can just be supportive of anything just because it's a party rhetoric. Like, mm. you could be like, oh yeah, I'm really for this guy. Like, no matter what. Mm. And I feel like on every every side, everybody's just like, especially in politics, it's very, um, you know, per party. It's it's not about it's less about what people do. It's more like, oh, this is my party. I'm gonna stay yeah. with them. And it's like not just looking at it like it's so what it's, happened. Yeah, policy doesn't matter anymore. And I hate when people yeah. are like, I voted for Trump because of policy. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, you voted because you like The Apprentice. <laughs> but, um... That's like if Kanye runs, it's like, oh, I, it's like, I like Kanye. That's why I'm going to vote for him. <laughs> right. Yes, and then other people tight. will be like, and then other people are like, oh, well, it's this, uh, it's this party. So, yep, I'm going to vote. It's crazy. So, do you have any, like, opinions on the Brett Kavanaugh thing, or... I mean, it's, it'd be, it'd be pretty crazy if, uh, if he gets put on. Oh, I think I he will. Yeah. It's, I think he will. I definitely think be. I think he made a mistake in how he responded to the whole thing. Do I believe that he did it? I don't know. I wasn't there. But he should have not been this like, I certainly have drank beers in my life. Yeah, never his, have I. His How he was talking was. Just, and he was crying. And it's just like, yeah. bro, like, get it together, man. Like, yeah. If you're going to be a judge, a lifetime appointed judge, yeah. man. It's just like, I, I think more than anything, there. no matter what, like, if, if there's genuine, like, questioning. I, there's other people you could put as an option. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't, it's, it's well, really interesting how it, it, the, or like, you know, the um, Republican side's like, oh, it's got to be him. Well, do you know why? Oh, I, why? Okay, so um, midterm elections come up 
And oh you, yeah, yeah. No, I know because well, that's the big thing. The 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 Democrats, the Democrats. they, they want to be able to hold it out so that they can be like, oh, we can't. If they get it, then they can't um, ex- approve. But it's like you've got a couple months. You got three months. If you could just get somebody else, like maybe somebody who's not like. Dude has the, all this stuff against him. Could you imagine though? Because this is what would happen, dude. Let's say that Brett doesn't get it, and let's say they try to get someone else. The Democrats are coming for that person's oh, yeah. neck, dude. Oh yeah. Oh, it'll be a shit show. And and it's just crazy, man. I do think it's a, a complete mess about you know like it's weird that this is all on Twitter. Yeah. You know, like yeah, it's it it's it's really interesting how like that's how it, straight from the the source you you go on Twitter and. This is how like Trump's feeling. <laughs> right, it's, it's I blocked crazy. it. I blocked it. <laughs> I blocked him when he first got elected. Yeah, only because I knew that if I didn't, that's someone's Twitter I'd be on every day. Like that's someone <laughs> that I'd be like, "What is this idiot saying?" Well, it's today? so crazy. Like you get Trump talking about all this stuff, and then the next day he's tweeting about Kanye. <laughs> right. So it's right. it's a crazy world. It's like it, it's it's crazier than a movie. You, okay, you so, could never believe it would be. Let's get some candidates on the table for twenty twenty. Uh, we'll go Kanye, The Rock, uh, Oprah, put Oprah, 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 <laughs> Oprah. Um, and let's get one more. What's who's someone else who's talked about it? Uh, Do you know about running? Yeah. Uh oh, it's that actor chick. She running for like mayor in New York. She's like an actress. Not Linda. She Dunham. was in um Sex in the City. Oh, oh, oh. And she's like What's running for like Sarah governor. Jessica Parker. Oh, I didn't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> not Sarah Jessica. No, no, no. Yeah, one of the other. Uh, yeah, the. Dang, I forgot. The MILF name. one? The one yeah. who was super. Like the older lady? She had who was like, like blonde hair. Like. The older one. Yeah, I guess she Yeah, know. I know who you're But she's about. like running for mayor or something. Which is so know. crazy because, yeah. you know, her in Sex and the City, she was the one who. Do you know who we're talking about? No. Do you ever watch Sex and the no. City? Uh, Dude, that was one of those shows that, like. I would watch because it had the sex in the name and I would think there would be sex on it. <laughs> Me and it too. never was. Me too. <laughs> when you were a kid. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, this show's going to have tons of sex on it. <laughs> Not at all, dude. Not at all. What was your guilty pleasure show growing up? Oh, I... I tell you, I used to... So, I, I always thought um, that The Simpsons was bad. Well, actually, I'll tell you something even crazy. All right. So, when I was really little... I used to think that Full House was bad and inappropriate. So I'd be like, I'd sneak. Why? I'd sneak. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Would your parents not let no, you watch no, it? They never said anything about it. But I just like, because like, I don't know. I just thought it was like an inappropriate show for some reason. I would go and hide. I would go and I would like listen for my parents like, oh, I'm watching Full House. They better not know I'm watching Full House. Were you like attracted to like no, Stephanie? I, no, I was like just like, I was probably like a second grader or something. And I was oh, like, okay. I just thought it was like. Bad. bad like i was like oh this is like it's like a tv <laughs> show this is a disney channel right this is yeah. look at me doing bad things yeah I'm so i today. would hide and then same thing for the simpsons but they actually wouldn't let me watch that so i would, I would hide and watch it um what about like uh when you got older middle school like viva la bam were you a viva la bam kid um i would watch jackass okay i would watch that uh um, what's your favorite jackass oh man i can't even remember it's been so long is because the first one's the one where he puts the the uh, rat sock. Oh, on the his first dick movie. And... Oh yeah, I oh, I can't even remember any of it. Oh, no, I used to just watch it. I would I would watch the because uh, it would come on really late, and I would like stay at my grandparents' house. Oh, I gotta fly over here. Oh, um, I would sorry. I would um, I would watch it like really late, like when it would come on like one in the morning, and then yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I'd watch that, and I'd watch Daria too. I don't know. Daria. Oh, it's it was like a, a MTV um, animated show. Do you know Daria? Yeah, it's, okay. it's like just like I don't even know how to describe it. It's it's kind of um like this, this. What was the plot? It was like a high school, and this uh, Daria, she was um, kind of uh, didn't have a personality. She would just she talked like this, and her like sister was like super popular. But it had like really good music and stuff. It was it was um it wasn't by the same guy who did Beavis and Butthead, but it was because the guy who did Beavis and Butthead did like King of the Hill and stuff. Right. Uh, Mike Judge, but um, it was kind of like in, in that, the same vein. Yeah, yeah, because it was when they started doing like the animation stuff, and that was another good show. Are you an anim- are you an animation fam, including anime? Like, do you like anime as I'm, well? I never really got into anime. Me That's one area. Like a lot of my friends, like were super super into anime, but I never 
never got into that type of stuff. And so when did you start hanging out? Because we have some mutual friends. Like, yeah. do you still hang out with Chase and Elijah yeah. and all them? Yeah. And did you hang out with them in high school or did yeah, that come I, post high school? I, I became friends with them. So um, Elijah, he was in my piano class. Yep. So what was I'm that teacher's name? Tuttle. Tuttle. Yeah. So I had uh, piano with him. Okay. And then um, I met Chase through him. And so the reason I met him in um, piano was because um, Sean Stecker was, um, he he was like my good friend in, in uh, high school and he was uh, neighbors with, with those guys. And Were you in IB? Yeah, yeah. And was Sean in IB? Yeah, he was too. Because like, so for those that don't know, we at our high school, we had this thing called Inter International, International Baccalaureate. Baccalaureate. Yeah. Thank you, I ought to fuck that up. Um, and it was like the smart kid group, right? Is that like fair? Yeah, it was. I don't, yeah, it was because it was that and AP, and um, it was the one that they kind of like they would push and be like, oh yeah, this is like really, um, this is like really presti- prestigious, and um, it kind of. I mean, it was it was tough. And it was a lot of work, but um, it doesn't really set you up for like college credits as well as like AP because uh, in like the Midwest, it's really good for that type of stuff. So, the, but, what's the benefit of doing IB? I don't even know. I mean, it was it was it got you ready for college because it's a lot of writing. Yeah. So it like really prepared you for that. But yeah. um, outside of that, and so so there were like how many people did you have in your IB program? Oh, not many. Like Maybe, eight. Uh, it was a little more than that. It was probably like twenty total. But okay. there was two different sections. So okay. like it was like split up. So like there'd be like twelve people in each class. And because my brother was in it, and so okay. everybody was. I remember everybody was so close. In yeah, because we'd have all the classes together. Like everybody had the same classes together for two years straight. And so you and Sean had IB together. Yeah. And so through Sean, you meet Chase and meet Elijah. Those guys, yeah. And y'all just hung out. Like, did y'all? I remember because Elijah was making music kind of at the time. Like, is he still doing that? Is he still? Um. Yeah. He. I mean, he. Uh. He like messes around. Right. With like stuff. plays around. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Not like anything like serious. Yeah. Yeah. And then. You know, Chase has always been doing amazing art. Yeah. Um, dude, his stuff has gotten so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So he's cr- he's so talented. Unbelievable. Um for I'm gonna have him on the podcast. And for those of you who don't know, um, Chase Lawrence is a guy that makes insane art. Yeah. <laughs> That's really the extent of that. He the guy um, that made the cat thing. The cat thing. That was in the jar. No. Oh, uh he, Oh yes. He he did something like the it, cat it, Well, I think he just I think he just found that. Or something like was, what? Like it's like one of those things like a science department would have oh, like preserved. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. But yeah, he. Oh, but he put that in his um, his piece. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he has like he. Uh, it's like uh, 3D art. Um, has like a pillar and stuff. Yep. So yeah, he he does he does a lot of like he's he's a very uh, unique guy and like his his interests for like art. Uh, he likes a lot of like olden timey stuff. Yeah. Like like like, um, like Renaissance era art and. It's, it's really cool to see his take on things. I remember in high school, because he was in mock trial that same year. Yeah. And I remember, like, this dude's fashion. I remember looking at him being like, this is the coolest person I think I've ever <laughs> seen. Because we grew up in a town called Cartersville, which is, like, Dickies and, yeah, like, really Vineyard country. Vines. Yeah, and, like, Carhartt. Um, and to see this kid in here with long red hair that's just <laughs> dripping with sauce. Um, cool kid. Definitely a cool kid. But yeah, man, I mean, it has been a journey for sure. It's hard to believe. I, for some reason, I thought you graduated college later, but 2013. I graduated a semester early. Okay. So, I yeah, because I, most, like, like everybody else would have graduated, I guess, in, um, like, uh, what, May, for, May 2014. So, so you did I, December? I, yeah, yeah, I took, I did some, um, some summer classes to, like, speed it up. And when you graduated, did you like take any time off and like go travel or no, anything? No, I went straight to work. Okay. Yeah, right after that. And where did you go? AT and T. AT and T. Yeah. Okay. Is there? Would you like to take time off to travel? Like especially with it this be, record yeah, label. Yeah, it'd like, be cool. So I've I've actually gone. Um, I went to to Canada um, last year. Okay. Last uh, around Fourth of July, um, I went up to Halifax, which is um, on the. The eastern coast it's a it's on a nova scotia which is like an island province of canada hmm. um i've actually that's actually if you if you we get back into like the cassette thing like how i started there was actually a cassette label in halifax called poncho records and i just happened to find them online and so i like that was like one of the first places i actually started buying cassettes so i really like got tons of cassettes from these guys up in halifax and i just loved it. it's kind of like 
like 60s psychedelic rock, very influenced, so very old sounding. Um, so I always loved the music up there. And then I actually started um, finding some bands up there and started working with them. And it was crazy to just uh, finally go up there to like that place where they all are from and kind of like, I mean, if it wasn't for those cassettes, it probably wouldn't have ever been a cassette label. Um, but yeah, went up there, met those guys, then flew to Vancouver. So the completely across the, the like continent or yeah, North America. Yeah. World. Yeah. And then, uh, went to Vancouver, um, met the Travis guy who, um, I did the tape with. And then there was another, um, band or a, a guy, his name's Robin. He was in a band called sweat, um, who I did their tape for, um, he was actually doing like a little solo tour and he was just going across Canada and he had a show in, um, in, uh, Vancouver. So like I met up with him, went and saw a show, then went to Victoria with him, saw another show and then came back. And if it wasn't for human sounds, you I would never, I would never be out there. How many artists have you worked with now? Um, it's probably like total artists. Probably like 20 something, but um, like I said, a lot of the beginning, it was a lot of one off things, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then so recently, I've been working with um, probably about 10 people who, and I've done like multiple releases, and, and those are guys like if they have something new, I would like if they were, were interested, I would like put it out for them. And, is there a group that, and this is kind of I'm trying to answer this respect or ask yeah. this respectfully, but is there a group that when you heard them and started working with them, you were like, Oh, these guys could be big. Like, is there anybody that has stood out? Oh, as like um, yeah, I think, I think, uh, when I first heard vacations, okay. and those are, they, they, um, they've gotten super, like I was saying, the YouTube getting a lot. Um, I, uh, I, w I thought that they were had something special because they were able their their first two EPs so that has uh, two EPs so the first side is their their like second EP it's vibes and then the other is uh, days and they're two very like distinct sounds um, and they're actually from Australia okay and um, and yeah so I, I I thought they were they were something special and then yeah they they got super popular and um, I actually uh is this one of the 10 groups that you work with yeah yeah so i actually released their um their debut album recently um earlier this year in march and and they actually came, uh, flew over or one of the guys campbell who's like the the he's the songwriter and uh, lead singer he flew over to um to austin for south by southwest and i went out there with them and they played some shows and like just packed crowds so i know that I know that vinyls are what's up next as far as like, excuse me, something you'll distribute, but yeah. like, do you have a personal new goal? Like, do you want to be able to tour with an artist? Like, I think the biggest thing is, um, I really, I, vinyl's like always been my number one, um, because like I said, I'm a big record collector. Do you have like a thousand records? Oh, um, probably not a thousand, but I've got a lot of records. Okay. I, I have like. A lot of records. Um, okay, but you gotta so let I, me know what you think of those. Yeah, too. for sure. I'm I'm for really sure. interested to hear what you think yeah, about Minor Threat. I'm excited to check it out. Um, that'll be a cool one. Yeah. Um, but I I guess like those like like getting that and then I think outside of that is it's so cool to see um, all the stuff in the record shops. Uh, oh yeah. Especially like it's it's so weird like in Japan like just random so, record shops in Japan. If I could get that in the U S. That would be. That's like a really cool. So if if Vice came to you and was like, "We want to do a show about you going to like all the different record stores in the country," you'd be like, "Oh yeah, that'd be cool." I I love like I love vinyl. And... What's the so Fantasyland was right there? Yeah, below so you. Fantasyland uh, that was yeah right right. Did you below shop where I there? Left. Um, I would go there every once in a while. I would go there for record store day because it was so close. If there was like a, a release I really wanted, um, but it was it's a little more expensive because it's in Buckhead. Yeah, they're right. They're going for like that like like uh north atlanta crowd coming in yeah yeah a lot of older people Who's the, what's the best record store in atlanta best record store in atlanta um for vinyl um like old old school stuff like like 60s 70s 80s yeah wax and facts where's that in little five okay is that the one that's upstairs uh no that's a that's like beatport i think that that one's like um hip-hop specific and like dj and stuff so wax and facts is Right beside Psycho Sisters. Gotcha. And then 
if you want like new stuff criminal. or criminal, yeah, yeah, which Criminal's is awesome too. Criminal is awesome, which is right next door, right basically. by Wax and Facts, yeah. So like old school stuff, definitely Wax and Facts. Now, did you ever listen to Floyd Fishel's record player? No. Did you ever have a chance? No. Apparently, he had like a four thousand dollar record oh, player wow. or something crazy. That's crazy. Um, do you have a really nice record player? Yeah, I've got a pretty nice one. I uh, I upgraded um a couple years ago. Okay. To a, a much nicer record player. I I had a. My well, my first record player was just kind of. I think my dad got it from like um like a thrift shop or something. Right. And then um I got one, I guess, junior or senior year, and I had that one all the way up until like three years ago. Okay. And then I got a a, a lot nicer one. And, and, and speakers, I also have heard, are super important. <clears throat> yeah, speakers are super important. That that's one area that I haven't super because I I had been just using the same speakers for a long time. Um, because I didn't have like the nicest record player. Um, and then when I got my new record player, I kept the speakers, but when I moved recently, I just got a new pair, uh, new, like a new set of speakers. What are they? Uh, they're, I don't even know. They're, they're Bose, but I'm not sure like the model number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dude, do you have any questions? So, so Nigel, uh, is like the producer on this podcast and he also, uh, makes music and, uh, knows a ton about like music and equipment. So if I haven't asked anything, do you nah, have for sure. you? Um, bro, I got a question about, I see a lot of companies who distribute vinyl and cassettes. Yeah. Um, have you thought about doing, and for smaller artists, have you thought about doing like made to order stuff? Yeah. So th- that was, so actually when I, um, when I first started out, it was kind of made to order. Cause okay. like I, it, cause I would do them each individually. Mm. Um, and so like, I didn't want to like, and it would take, it was real time. So if an album was 30 minutes long. To make that tape, it was thirty minutes. Um, Dang. Yeah, so that was a lot more made to order. Now it's it would be a pretty expensive, especially for like these type of things. Because um, like I could, if if it was like a CD that was uh, um, duplicated, like uh, yeah, yeah. instead of like a burnt CD, you could definitely do that. And but like I'm getting most of them um, like pressed, and right. uh, so you got to get bigger runs, right, and especially right. like setup costs for like put, doing that print. It's like twenty five bucks each time you do that, so it just wouldn't be really um, cost really effective. Like cost effective, but yeah. but yeah, it would. I think um, I think there's some some areas that 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 would be going towards in the future, with like um, I know I know for like uh, shirts and stuff, a lot of people okay. do that now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, for that. Are stuff, you selling merch? I just saw you. Yeah, drop so t-shirts. I actually so I just got a new logo, and um, it's the first. Let me see the CD. So that actually is the old logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is what I know. So the wave is the old logo. The this waves. Well, so it's a new wave. Okay. So new yeah, wave. Got, yeah. So okay. Actually, and and I got you guys some pins too. Ooh, I have the original. Yeah. I have yeah, the yeah this is the this is the original. I get you another here. I got. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Boom. um. You know what I'm gonna do? Sorry, guys that are watching this. <laughs> um, but so but it's you, funny in human sense. It's actually funny because the so that's our um the original logo and um chase actually made that okay but um the file that he uh he gave gave me wasn't like uh wasn't like the raw like image it was uh, a just just a jpeg <laughs> with it, like put chase. on put on a white background and chase. that was the only image we had oh no and that was fine for a while um but then when once it was like oh we should probably start making a little bit more merch um and wanted to do shirts i i like went to get that made and um they're like, no, nah, we can't do that. It's too low res. So I was like, ah. Oh. So we Can actually. I see the new logo. Oh yeah. Do you have yeah. a picture of it on your yeah, phone? Yeah, I got it. Um. Okay. Um. Because is the shirts that you just made the new one? It'll be the new one. Yeah. Because you posted them on Instagram, right? Yeah. So we're we're gonna made right now, and they'll be ready um, end of the month, I think. Okay. Heck yeah. Um. And while he's looking this up, any more questions that you have? Um. Even as an artist, like like as an artist, um, what would be your main questions if he came to you with an idea to, to make on cassette, to, to do an album on cassette? Oh, um, I know you say it's a lot, it's time consuming because you're yeah. actually marketing and putting in the time yourself. Um, when you are doing that, is that mostly to get it into shops or are you actually marketing to their fan base? Uh, yeah, well, it's it, it's. It's a lot of the fan base, um, a lot of doing that type of marketing. Oh man, my phone's like all sorts of messed up. Um, but um, now, um, 
it's I, I've been doing a lot of work to try to get into shops because um, that's that that's like how I really want to see it expanding. Um, like I sent a lot of messages out to different places and a lot of places just won't like respond because um, they don't know. And, and it's a very uh, the the um, the record store industry is is a lot different. It's it's a lot of older people um, who've just been doing um, doing it for a long time and they don't know about like the new how these new artists are coming out like so many new artists are just uh, and you see it in all different areas um like chance the rapper just him by himself he's not he doesn't have like a label or distribution mm. like now he's got distribution yeah. deals with all these people but they're coming out um online posting their stuff on soundcloud Bandcamp is what i use youtube and, and it's why, not why? coming through the same channels as it was before um, finish your statement too. I yeah. Don't so, so I think uh, a lot of the record shops, they don't realize like it doesn't have to come from a major label for people to want it. Um, like, art smaller artists are doing things and they're becoming big artists, mm -hmm. and they don't have anybody like they don't have a Sony distributing their music who has these deals. Like, oh, we'll put everything we release in your shop. So it's it's harder to get into the sh the stores, but once it gets in there then people start getting the tapes and stuff and they're like oh this is what the younger people are wanting they're finding their stuff on spotify discover weekly right right and that doesn't require anything that's just oh i like this music here's another song that's like it so right yeah i, I can see how that could be difficult yeah it's hard and it's it's hard without um some sort of somebody who knows that industry because like i said it's all just me and I'm kind of just reaching out to a lot of people, and um, I've Would had. Would you like to have someone else on the team? Yeah. Oh, I think for I think for distribution, I'd and and that's kind of like what I have in Japan. I have a distribution partner, who um, who has those relationships, um, knows what stuff they want. Then I send it out to them. <coughs> I think something I, I I'm definitely interested in something like that in the U.S. Uh, like I was saying, that would be something really cool because like, it's it's not even about like oh like selling all of these in there it's more just to have it in the shop would be so mm, cool yeah just to like be like oh i go to this shop because in atlanta you can go to a shop and see some human sound stuff but if you go to new york city and you go into some store it'd be cool to see it there or you go to denver you see it there and um i and think like that who, would be really who who's the connect for that like who would you there's have... distribution um companies out there it's just finding one having a connection with them um them being interested in it and just like telling them like oh this is something people are interested in are there who are the big indie labels in atlanta oh in atlanta do you know i don't i mean there's like hip-hop labels yeah I right, think right, right, records actually is a record label yeah i think they kind have of, like yeah, their yeah. own little stuff as well but like for like indie rock i don't really know any anybody making the same stuff and that's kind of the thing like i haven't really like Lunar Vacation was the first Atlanta band I ever worked with as well. And is it the only Atlanta band? They're the only band I've worked with in Atlanta so far. Great. So the majority are. Is there like Everybody. a certain? Is there a certain like geographical location that the majority yeah, of these artists come out of? A lot of people. Um, I've been working with a lot of people in California lately. Um, Have you been out there? Yeah, I've, I've been out there. Um, so Bane's World. He's in. He's in Long Beach, and then through him. Um, I'd, I'd known of, uh, so his guitarist, his name's uh, Michael Sayer. I'd known about him before. I'd seen him online, um, but he was he's the guitarist for, for Bane's World, and I started working with him, and then through those guys, they introduced me to their friend uh, in a band called Interwave. Been working with those guys. They actually all just came out to, uh, they did a nationwide tour. They stopped in Atlanta at the Drunken Unicorn, and um, I worked with those guys. Um, and then there's the Australia, and then Canada there's a lot of people up in Canada um, and they just make like it, it's it's really interesting like a certain like sound of music a lot of people in Canada really um, have that down and I've met like some of my favorite artists and like my favorite probably my favorite release I've ever done is a band from Halifax and they're called Municipality and um, just uh, everything about it is just stuff I like and, and, and uh, why like what is it about it that you oh like? it sounds Sounds very, uh, very sixties. Okay, um, and I really like, like I said, you know, Beach Boys, uh, Beatles. Like I'm, I was it's like, I was raised on that type of stuff, and um, very reminiscent of that. And a lot of those bands, they just have like very, uh, and I, I like guitar focused music. Okay, um, I really like that type of sound. And do you play an instrument? I do not. Okay, um, I took piano for a little while, and it at 
that's how school. I met those guys. Yeah, but right. n- nothing really. And I'd love to learn an instrument, but it's just it's time consuming, and I've I've got a lot of a lot of on your plate, yeah, man. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. And so uh, this th- this question is for the beginning days and the days of now. What what is the most difficult part of running Human Sounds Records? Um. Probably. Because you can even so the beginning days it was it was just getting people to like find people who would be interested in the music. It was a lot of work, just like like going online, posting on this website, posting on that website. Hey, we got this because I mean, when you start out, if you don't have money behind it to like pay for a PR person, and like that's not anything I've ever done. I've never like got PR or anything. It's it's all been organic, which is just still kind of crazy. That's crazy. But at the beginning, it was that. And now it's, I'm kind of lucky that there's a lot of people who follow and really enjoy the music. Um, now it's just kind of keeping up with everything by myself. Um, it's a lot of time to ship all these orders and get them out there and, and like deal with new releases. And like when like one cassette we just put out in this summer was a band called Temporex. And, or artist actually it's just one one guy out in California as well San Diego um, he sold 200 cassettes in 30 hours <laughs> that's crazy yeah insane like, has there ever so been a much. time where you got the cassettes made and something was wrong with them I've had um, a couple issues with like single cassettes like not being recorded properly then we just get a new one made but never had like a big issue with an entire run that's good. like knock on wood because that would be That'd be, that'd be brutal. And so, I mean, you know, it sounds like, man, you know, you've said a lot in this podcast, you know, that you're a one man team. I mean, yeah. it sounds like for this to scale, for you to scale, oh, yeah. it sounds records, you're going to have to, it would have to be more people. Yeah. And so. so like distribution and then like, have you ever in the entire timeline of this company of this label had any business partners or has it entirely been, there's never yeah. been a single person. It's just been, yeah. And all. why? Just because you haven't found anyone that, that I think, brings I think value? mostly just because um, it's it's kind of a hobby, mm-hmm. and I really enjoy it. Like I, I love um, like every single person that buys something. I'm the one who goes out and gets that cassette, gets a pin, puts it in there, mails it to them. Well, dude, and, the the and I'm gonna speak for the music <laughs> industry, but uh, they owe you a big thank you because there's not many people like you. There's not many people who love music so much that they're going to work their ass off essentially for free i mean you're profiting now yeah and it's not like it's not like it's just a cassette it's only a couple bucks you're going to even be making so it's just like i really love uh just getting because like i was saying earlier like everything i i put out is just something i really like to listen to myself like i'm not going to put out just something like oh this will this will sell really well and i think uh it would it would be really a uh, people would love it it's like if i'm going to release it you know it's something that's going to be one of my favorite albums of the year and so. and what an important thing to say man i mean dude now when everything is about clout and when everything is about views and likes quality yeah. of content is dying and that's what you're focused on you're focused yeah. on quality yeah um i mean dude and it's super honorable and very cool and that's you know i was talking to him on the way here i mean what you have done and what you are doing I know no one else that's doing it. Yeah. And I mean, it is something that I think in the coming years, we're going to look back and be like, dude, this is yeah. by far one of the coolest things to happen in music of 2018 because there's so much oversaturation of like, I can download every album on Apple Music yep. and listen to it and da 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 da. But you have created a piece of of art man and it's crazy dude i mean huge kudos like oh, I, I appreciate it. i am a fan of what you do thank you um seriously it's so cool i mean when we were at that art uh show with yeah. the guys from here and and their band played and pico played yeah you were the only person that i was interested in like your opinion of their music because yeah. like, I, th- I think your ear is just like have you always had an ear like have you always yeah i i, I never really recognized it as being like like knowing what something people would like but i guess i you do bro i because I, I just really like have always loved listening to music and um like the stuff i like i really like and i'll just like zone in on different styles and i'll just find all these different people and yeah i mean just combing through the internet and finding like some bands and if if cox doesn't if cox doesn't work out dude be an a and r 
you could be the sickest A and R, dude. Oh my god. Now is that something you would do? Like if someone that said would be, that would if you won the cool. lottery and they were like, yo, just oh, go find artists. Yeah, I mean I would love that. Um, <sighs> You'd be crazy. If I, yeah, if I won the lottery, I would do that. Something like that. Or actually I'd probably just do a record store. Because I <laughs> love that type of stuff. Right. And I just like keep doing the human sounds. Because I, I I think that's one of the things I just really enjoy like um like being able to, you know, do see the whole process through. It's really, really cool. Wow. Is anything else that you got? Any um, more questions? Bro, it sounds like you got a really good ear for music. And um you probably know a lot of music that I don't know, but I'm into the music you like. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure you listen to Pink Floyd and Yeah. Because you mentioned psychedelic rock. Where do people find you? Because like how as me, a person who's interested in that type of thing, how could I well how would I find you? Um so like the the label and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um like I said, Bandcamp. That's like the that's the platform where we we do everything from um, all the orders and all the digital stuffs on Bandcamp. And I wanted to ask why Bandcamp specifically? So because it's such a the platform is so easy to use. Okay. Um, it's it's really easy to upload the music. Um, I don't know anything about Bandcamp. Yeah. So Bandcamp actually like I found out about Bandcamp uh, back in probably 2010. Okay. And it's just a really easy place for artists to go and upload their music and then sell merch and if you sell a CD or you sell a cassette or you sell a record then you get the digital download it's through PayPal really easy it, it like automatically like gives all the information to the the seller so they could like get the shipping label and everything really easy really nice and and um, easy platform I'm, I'm working on a website right now and, and I'll start having stuff on there but um, but Bandcamp just because like for especially for that type of music that's where people go yeah and that's where I mean they'll sell it on their website but they sell it on Bandcamp and it sells tons and it's just been a growing platform just in general um, really really easy to use <coughs> and uh, have have our stuff on there that like all of the physical stuff um, is on Bandcamp and then um, then also you know we'll, uh, and it's human sounds records dot bandcamp dot com um, and at human sounds records at on human Instagram. sounds records or yeah, at Human Sounds Records and at Human Sounds Rex on um, on Twitter, but it will post on those those uh, those sites and uh, okay. and YouTube, like I was saying, YouTube. Um, and people just type in Human Sounds Records. Yeah, if you type in Human Sounds Records, you'll on find YouTube. it. YouTube. Yeah, okay. and Vacations. If you type in that that word, like even though it's such a broad, you'll find that album. That's unreal, yeah. dude. Were you were you losing your mind? Oh, it was crazy because it was just. Uh, I remember the day I was out. Um, with uh with some friends and we were just like hanging out and my phone just started like vibrating like crazy and i'm like what's going on and i'm getting all these con comments and stuff and I, I look at it and it's all in that one video and just thousands like something like sixty thousand views in like one day just how did you celebrate oh i i was just like well, let's see if it keeps going <laughs> it kept going yeah and, and it ended up being like twelve thousand subscribers like in like that week and then it's it's like obviously like Stuff slows down, it but plateaus. it's been like yeah, yeah. But it's been like sustained, like you know, a lot of people every day coming and checking it out, and it's really cool to see like constantly like people finding it, and and that's always the cool thing, and like being able to work with artists um, who who like you really respected beforehand, because um, like I've worked with some some art like this one guy who I, I put out his uh, I reissued one of his albums. I have been a fan of him. His name's Julian Lynch. Um, He's in. Uh, he's a guitarist for a band called Real Estate. Uh, they're one of my favorite bands, like modern bands. But okay. um, I, uh, I listened to his stuff back in high school, like his solo stuff. And then to be able to like, like have the ability to work with those guys and put out their album is just crazy. And um, and yeah. Have you had some real fan moments of like where you had to kind of check yourself and be like, Oh yeah, I mean it's it's so funny because like like I was saying like everything is like stuff that I really love. So like when I meet like these, uh, all the artists and stuff, it's like, it's kind of crazy. Cause it's like, obviously like we're friends on like, we work together, we do this, but it's like, Oh, I'm like really like impressed by you guys. Cause like, I love you're what you do and I'm a huge fan. Like and I love you, the music. Have you befriended any of them? Have oh yeah. Like I think a lot of like everybody, like we're, we're close and, um, like we're all like good friends. I'd say outside of everything. Cause you know that's that's really the relationship I want to keep. It's not like a oh like you have to do this. Uh, I don't want I want the music to sound like this. It's like a friendship, wow. and it's like I all I care about is those guys succeeding. I don't care about anything else. Like 
I, I wouldn't care if it like d just broke even, nothing else. Like I just want those guys to succeed, and it's really like awesome to see it happen. Dude, my hat goes off to you, man. You are doing something that is honorable. I I really look up to what you're doing. I really admire it, man. I mean, it is. Um, there's there's very few uh, people like you, my friend. I appreciate it. Yeah, and and thank you so much for, for oh, coming on this podcast. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, dude. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Um, yeah. So so guys, if you want to go follow uh, Josh on Instagram, he's at Human Sound Records. Uh, Twitter, Human Sound Rex. Uh, Bandcamp, Human Sounds Records. Bandcamp. Com and. And yeah, just if you search Human Sounds Records, you'll find it. Well, so. dude, is there anything else you want to plug? Do you want to? Do you uh, need to plug anything? Seriously, take the floor. The floor is yours. I'd say, um, yeah, if if you're just into that type of music, I'd say go check it out. Um, and what type of music? Like indie rock, um, surfy, psychedelic. Uh, if you, if you like like classic rock or like '60s classic rock, um, you'd probably enjoy it. And just just in general, if I, I'd say if you like good stuff, like good rock music, definitely go check it out. Well, dude, thank you so much, man. All right, guys, we will be back uh, next time with someone new. Have a great day. <laughs> dope, dope. Dude, what, you awesome. liked it? Yeah, man. You felt like